By watching the advertisements at the beginning, you can help me to continue to help you with these free informative videos. Thank you. If you want to find all of them, you just go to genesispc.com, click on videos on YouTube, and you will find all my videos on Excel, Excel VBA, Access, Access VBA, and VBScript. And you just click on any of them, and there you go. This video is about pivot tables and the hurdles you will encounter sometimes. Uh, these records, like I showed here, are good for record keeping, but they are not good for an overview. If you want to analyze these data, you probably need some more information. And that's where pivot tables come in. This is a pivot table of this information. So it would be great if you could do this kind of quickly and analyze who is your best, let's say, sales representative or whatever the story is. So how do you make a pivot table? You click anywhere inside your table. The machine knows that the table ends in an empty column and an empty row. So you don't have to worry about that unless you only want a specific section, then you have to highlight that. And then you insert a pivot table. Insert pivot table. And it says this is your table range. By default it puts everything on a new worksheet. If you want it here, like I showed here, you need an existing worksheet. And then you, you will get a surprise. You will see to the right that there is your design screen. But that doesn't make sense. Why did that happen? For the simple reason that you didn't do your work correctly. What is the problem? You should have had some headers or labels on top of it. So I'm going to insert a new row and I'm going to say that is the month, that is the sales rep, and that's the amount of money. Without those labels, a pivot table cannot be made properly. So now I do the same trick again. I insert a pivot table. I put it on a new sheet. But this time I get correct information. So if you want the month in the rows, I click and hold on month and put it in the rows. I want the reps in the columns and the amount in the values. And you see it builds up nicely. If, if you ever lose this panel to the right, that is probably because you clicked outside the pivot table. So click inside again. If you want to do some detail work, I won't go into all those details, then you just click on sum of amounts, value field settings, and you change the number format, in this case to currency. And that's what we got. There are a few other surprises when you deal with pivot tables. So I'm going to this one. I did already the work for you. I put it on the same sheet. But sometimes you want to update your information. Let's say we want to add sales tax of 7% to these sales. You can do that very quickly. You select it, Control C to copy. Then you highlight that range, control shift arrow down, and right click and pay special. You are going to multiply that amount of money with 1.07. And you don't want this format, so you just want the value to be multiplied. And when you click on OK, you will see that everything updates except your pivot table. Why? Because a pivot table does not update automatically unless you say so. So in order to update your pivot table, you have to be inside the pivot table, either on this sheet or on another sheet, analyze, and then you say refresh. Or you can use Alt F5. So now that information updates. If you find that annoying, for sometimes you forget to update, and then you have here a very old pivot table where 
whereas your data have been changing and changing. If you want to change that permanently, you go to Analyze again, Options, and then you go to the Data, Data, Refresh your data when opening the file. I'm cancelling that because I don't want to do that. Don't expect miracles with refreshing. I'm going to the, the next sheet and we are doing the following. This is all correct, but now Lewis says I worked in December but you forgot to put me in. So I'm going to add one more row for Lewis. I'm, I'm doing it kind of quickly by just copying those two rows down. So it keeps the pattern going. December, Lewis, 9.9, .9, etc. And so Lewis should now be in December. So we refresh, either with the shortcut or with the refresh button or Alt F5. And you will see that Lewis is still not in December. Why? Because we added that to the end of the table. And at the beginning, the situation was as follows. Control shift arrow down, control shift arrow to the right, but it was only going this far. So that last one is not part of it. How do you solve that? It depends a little bit on the version of Excel you have. If you have 2010, 2013, then you open the Analyze tab. If you don't, then you open the wizard again. I put that here. And then when you get that wizard thing, it puts you to, to the last step of the wizard and use the back button. And then you can change the original range that was included in the pivot table. So I am in 2013, so I use the Change Data Source button. Analyze and then change the data source and it says this was your old range and you notice that it stops at 29 so by doing control shift arrow down it will automatically include all the following rows that should be part of it and now when you adjust that then you will see that finally Lewis is there those are a few hurdles you need to know if you are new to pivot tables. There is much more to pivot tables. I discussed that in my book, in my CD-ROM Excel 2007 Expert. It will also work for 2010 and 2013, although the, the interface has changed a little bit. But in general, all the tricks you will learn here you can use in later versions. If you want to focus on later versions only, you can either do that for Excel 2013 for Scientists, a book or a CD. Or you can learn a lot about tricks like this through Excel simulations. And if you want to program Excel 2013 VBA.